will introduce the next five minute pitch, uh, which is Don Eric Archer, CEO at the company Checkwatt, who works with the different digital solutions in the energy sector and who has done some research and thinking on when you can disconnect microgrids into island mode, among other things. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for the invitation to be here. Uh, yeah, shortly about uh, the company where I work, we do various types of uh, IT services within the energy sector, uh, shuffling a lot of data from different places uh, back and forward and trying to make sense of it, uh, visualization and uh, uh, nowadays also uh, using it for the aggregation service, um, which is uh, interesting field and um, as we've seen here today many many of the speeches is about how to uh, make use of the flexibility resources um, so we are taking part in a number of uh, uh, research projects and I'm gonna mention a bit about two of them that are uh, relating to the topic of uh, today's uh, conference. Um, one is on a local level uh, how to conduct energy and power trading and when to do different services and uh, central for the project called uh, Parity, um, an EU project uh, all over Europe, is the uh, state of the grid if we are in a green yellow or red state, the market uh, conditions will vary and uh, the laws that apply will vary. Uh, specifically what the DSO is allowed to do and not allowed to do uh, in terms of uh, trading and controlling loads. Um, the other one is called SDN Microsense and that one is more specifically about the island mode capacity of local regions. Um, since uh, what we're seeing with the uh, increased number of photovoltaic installations and also batteries and EV chargers coming online, these are sunken costs in a way that they can assist in uh, main operating a island mode situation when there's a grid failure. Uh, so the project is uh, investigating how, uh, how much this actually helps and uh, how large the additional cost of a grid forming unit in an island mode would be. Um, we are also taking part in some, in some policy um, work uh, for the industry uh, in these events by Power Circle and also in the Swedish Solar Energy Association. Uh, so I, relating to this, I can recommend the forum called uh, um, Forum Energi Gemenskaper, where um, I think it's open to anybody to join because the aspect of energy communities uh, relates a lot to this local trading of energy and power and potentially um, island mode capacity. Um, oh, something happened there to the... My punchline is not visible. <laughs> I'll have to say it. Um, so we're also uh, taking part in Solar Power Europe, the European branch of organization work for policies. Um, so the question here is, is an interesting one I would like to emphasize. Uh, why does the solar energy industry want to limit uh, the peak capacity of distributed solar resources connected? Because this is actually the case now that Solar Power Europe is lobbying for. And that's uh, relating to this, that we are looking at incredibly large investments in grid infrastructure. So there is a decision between cable or flexibility or cable or storage. 
Um, and uh, I think that the European Organization for Solar is actually taking a standpoint to to put more of those resources into uh, solar and storage. Uh, well, limiting the solar capacity distributed, but increasing the storage. Um, and we also take part in some uh, policy work with uh, NSUI uh, regarding this. We have to end there, but I know, I know what's on your last slide, and I can ask you that in the panel discussion instead, <laughs> yep. how island mode can be valued. Um, so I will give you time to, to um, talk about that in the panel. Thanks. So thanks a lot, Dan-Erik. Mm.